Publishers are more than labels. They have serious technical consequences. Luckily, we have Rob Wood here a talented fast track architect who's gonna show us how using multiple publishers can cause deployment problems and so much more. And with that, let's go back in time to when I first learned about publishers. I thought publishers just indicated who made the solution and helped identify which columns were made by which team. They also had zero technical value or consequence. Good try, young Sean. Let's look at them with an example. If I'm building a real estate solution, I might have a table for storing houses. I'd make a brand new solution and I'd make a brand new publisher called Real Estate Developers. They have prefix RES and then I click create. I make a new house table and then the prefix is RES from my publisher earlier. High level, in my dev environment, I have my real estate solution, the publisher is RES, and I added the house table. Next thing we need is a rentals table. But let's say a completely different engineering team is gonna maintain this. The rentals team might click new solution, type in rentals, they'd make a new publisher for themselves, and they'd have their own prefix called RNT. In their solution, they have a new rental table with a lookup to the house table. This setup seems fine. If you wanna deploy this to production, totally works. The only thing to keep in mind is the RES team has to deploy first, and then the rental team can deploy their solution. The reason real estate team has to go first is because the rentals team has a dependency on the house table with their house look up here. But let's say you get tired of this split solution system and you wanna take house and put it inside of the rental solution. It's not that hard, just come up here to add existing, select the house table, and then just come in here, get rid of the house table from this solution. If I try to deploy this solution, that's gonna work fine. But when I try to deploy this solution to delete the house table, that's where things become a problem. Let's listen to Rob. Now you'll try to deploy the real estate solution. And um, what the platform's going to try and do is remove the base, the component for the house table. Yeah. And it says, no, you can't do that because the base layer for that table comes from the res publisher. And then the result is a mess because you'll end up with the table in both solutions. And that causes all of the layering issues that people might be familiar with. The best way to avoid all of that is just to use one single publisher. Rob goes on to say, had we used the same publisher in both solutions, we wouldn't actually have the problems. We could freely move the tables between solutions and deploy them without any issue. And that's documented. It's possible to move the ownership of a component from one solution to another within the same publisher, but not across publishers. It's a, it's a huge caveat that you won't find out until it's too late. Now you may be thinking two solutions, so what? I don't have to put them together. I'm fine with living with two solutions. Sometimes you're forced to put them in the same solution. For instance, let's say you create a table called agents for all the real estate agents inside the rental solution. And let's say house has a lookup like the real estate agent that's in charge of the house. Let's say they have that as a dependency on the agent table. Now you have what is called a circular dependency and you can't deploy any of this. If you try to deploy this solution, it's gonna start complaining that the rental solution isn't there. And if you try to deploy the rental solution, it'll complain that the real estate solution isn't there. This is called a circular dependency and it's one of the items on Rob's blog where he talks about the problems with this. But hey, maybe you're careful. And instead of making the agent table under this solution, you actually make it under this solution so it gets that RES publisher. If you did that, yes, you're fine. Now this model seems fine, but things could still get spooky. For instance, in the real estate solution, if we open the house form, we'll say it currently looks like this. And then the rentals team talks to the real estate team. They're like, hey, uh, that form, we're gonna modify it. Is that all right? And the real estate team says, yeah, go for it. The rental team opens their solution, goes to add existing table, and they're careful they just select the house form and add it and not the whole table. So the real estate team originally had this form, 
and the rental team added a new section and a new tab up here. And before all this, let's say the real estate team deploys this solution. So that's what ends up in our production environment. And the rental team just made this new form in their solution, which means this one goes away and both of these solutions have the same form now. If the rental team goes to deploy, what you expect to happen is that inside of the production environment, this form will be replaced by this form, but that doesn't always happen. For things like forms, there's a behavior that people might not be aware of called merging, where it will take both of those layers and it will merge them together. When you deploy that, to the production environment, you're going to ex expect it to look like what you just changed. Fine. But what happens is the, the platform actually m merges those layers together to produce a single form. It won't necessarily show you the, the form as, as you intend. And, and typically, you only want one layer for a form. But because of the publisher problem, we can't remove the original layer to, mm -hmm. to resolve the layering problem. You want your one version of that form, one layer, and then you'll always see the right result. What one layer looks like is instead of making updates to the form in the rental solution, instead, you would have made them right here inside of the real estate solution. So form changes don't exist in two different solutions. If the rental team really wants to edit this form, they should either ask the real estate team to do it, or they make a brand new copy of the house form and it can live in here. If you haven't noticed, the ideal setup is to have one big solution with one publisher and then you never have dependency issues or any of the problems we talked about. But that's not always practical. Sometimes you do have two separate dev teams or you're inheriting a system built by someone else. And Rob advises if the dev teams are truly separate, it's fine to have separate solutions and even separate publishers as long as the business logic is always going in one direction, meaning real estate solution first, rental solution second. But if you do have multiple dev teams, it might be time to consider a source code centric architecture and even having multiple development environments. Our video on that is coming up. In the meantime, big thanks to Rob for sharing all his knowledge with us. And if you want to dive deeper into this topic, he has the original post on it on LinkedIn with a thriving comment section where a lot of experts are giving their experiences with this. A link to this post is in the description. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Take care.